Good morning. How are you today? A little while ago, this was all black, black, black. But now there's opening. Sorry about that, people. The Wi-Fi was back in again. I just turned it off. And I think I found a switch which says that it cannot come in if I turn it off. So that's interesting, although when it automatically comes in and places in, it won't do that anymore. So to remember all these things is a little challenge. According to prognosis, today is the last day of the rain. For now, for this batch, for this two weeks we've had. <laughs> you can check out the videos there and you can see that it's been a while and it's been a great blessing. I forgot to check the water levels yesterday to see how much it had come up because the last measurement was for the 1st of February and the authorities would have done that yesterday on the first day of the week. We're in a very interesting spot here. Well, maybe we can just go beyond these trees and we'll become more interesting. Today we have Solomon. It's kind of reminiscent of David's bringing the ark to Jerusalem, how Solomon brings the ark up from the city of David into the new temple, an act of consecration to God, an act of putting God in the center of the city, the center of the lives of the people, a very important religious step. And there's no question that strong religious devotion is a great asset and by the same token, I have to tell you a little story that happened to me yesterday. When I was uploading the sunrise stroll and chat on YouTube, that's the way these uh, platforms operate. It brought to my attention a couple of YouTube, uh, other, from other producers, other, other things. So obviously trying to get me interested in other things and one of them caught my attention and it was two old men who were pilgrims to Jerusalem. And I actually got so fascinated by it that I listened to the whole tape. Yesterday was 51 minutes, but it was Sunday. So I took that as leisure time. Leisure is very important to take time to read take time to, to listen, to spend time with others, the fireside chat, leisure. Leisure is very important for the soul. And I included it here for you as an audio link in the notes and as a written link. I just picked up the, the one that was offered on the YouTube and I just found one on Google as a reading link. And it's probably in other languages if English is not your first language. It's very high quality. It's by Leon Leo Tolstoy. It's uh, the famous Russian writer who died about 114 years ago. And the author of War and Peace and so many other amazing works of literature. One of the greatest writers in history. And... I really recommend this 50 minute listen or 30 minute read. It's absolutely uh, enlightening and it's a very strong call to the inner faith life. It's a great story. I won't tell you the story. I don't want to spoil it because there's so much drama in it. And it makes so many great points about true religious practice. So while it is very important to have a great religious center, a great religious culture, a great uh, place of worship. This is part of our heritage uh, from the temple in Jerusalem and they were surely affected by the Egyptian temples for sure. 
uh, I had the great grace and pleasure of of um, visiting the Egyptian temples and understanding the nature of how the human being longs for communi communion with God and the effort human beings have gone to historically to find expression for that desire and that connection and that communion. So, yes, going back then to, to our texts here, we have Solomon establishing the religious culture. And that religious culture needs to be bound with great practical love. Great love of neighbor and uh, for the needy, especially for the needy. That's so important. Uh, this is, is one of the great uh, markers of identity as God's people. Because if God made us in his image and likeness, then every single human being is more than an American flag for America or uh, Irish flag for Ireland or a Singapore flag for Singapore. It's uh, a human being is more than a flag. A human being is the image and likeness of God. And we need to give great, great care and love. It's impossible to say we love God if we don't take care of the needy. So That's where we find Jesus today. He comes with a boat to Ginosar. Where is Ginosar? Do you know where Ginosar is? I think some of you should know it. You were pilgrims here in the Holy Land. So it sounds like another name, but it's on the other side of the lake. So over there we have the Gerasenes on the east side. And here on the west side, this is the plain of Ginosar. And this is a good place to see it right now. So you remember the museum where the boat is displayed and that's the place right up there you see there's a little protrusion there in the trees that is the boat museum and then we have the sea the uh the gome hotel it's called now it used to be called the sea of galilee hotel a new hotel just opened a year before us and then we have the town of migdal and and this was Magdala, so that's a, a modernized version, a new version of Magdala from the biblical inspiration. And then we have Wadi Hammam over there, which is then outside of the plain of Ginosar. It's at the mouth of the Wadi, uh, Wadi Hammam, that uh, is the connector route from Nazareth over to Capernaum, if you will, from our perspective as Christians. And so here on Ginosar is where Jesus and the disciples come with their boat. They're coming from the other side, across the lake over there somewhere. And we're going to see the sun for the first time today after a while. And then <clears throat> all the people are trying to touch Jesus' robes, to touch the, the uh, little strings hanging from his clothes, which is surely the biblical cultural context meaning behind touching his robes because in Malachi and Zechariah there are references to this healing in the fringes of his robes and these were little threads that uh, are little attachments that the Jewish people wore going back to the book of Numbers and the book of Deuteronomy and they were um, very uh, special because they even had a thread of blue techelet, that special blue color. It was uh, very special, very expensive, and was a reminder that they were free and they were going to keep the commandments of God, God's ordinances for their lives. They were going to be sanctified by doing what God wanted. And surely then, one of the things that God wants Definitely the time of worship and prayer, but also what Jesus was doing up here on the shores of Ginosar. So people, I think that's the great, the great message of today. Uh, 
Let me see if I'm missing one thing here that is in my heart to comment. I think we leave it like that for today. We'll have more time this evening at the Mass. And by the way, you probably know also that the homilies are also available as a podcast uh, on the Magdala YouTube channel. And you can also find them on the link tree of my, uh, where I put the, all the social media commentaries. And there's always a link to that inside the notes here on the, on the, um, on the, at each uh, sunrise stroll and chat. So God bless you. See you later. Oh, don't forget to sign up for the prayer pilgrimage starting in a week's time. The introductions. Don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. Kathleen is preparing a great, great, great pilgrimage for you guys on prayer. And that's prayer is very important. So be sure to sign up. Uh, go to the link. If, on the Facebook page here, I, they changed my profile picture. I'm not very good at doing those things. And it has the announcement of the uh, prayer pilgrimage as well. That's uh, going to start next Monday. Prayer pilgrimage for Lent. See you later, alligators. God bless you. Isn't that glorious to see the sun again?